<laughs> it's funny. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. <laughs> but I have upgraded so much this year to sometimes right when you get ready to upgrade, as soon as you upgrade, guess what? Something happens. Something happens that knocks you down and you feel like you lost that right to say that you still upgraded. Well, let me tell you, you have not lost the right to say that you have upgraded just because you may f- fall short in any season. You have not lost that. And I'm going to tell you why. The only way you're going to lose what you have, I'm going to tell you why. Go to um, Luke 9, 62. That's Luke 9, 62. And it says, and Jesus said unto him, no man. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't even pull it up. I just had the top of it, y'all. Bear with me. Okay. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. In another words, what he's saying right here is, 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 is if you're working for the kingdom of God and you're putting your hands to the plow, I don't care if you fall. Don't look back. Don't start dwelling on your past failures because that would keep you in bondage every, every time that would keep you from going forth. You know what? I, I was outside one day. I was a little girl and I was watching my daddy out there. He had a tiller. I don't know if y'all know what a tiller is, but it goes, and it's like breaking up the ground, breaking up the ground. It's smaller than a tractor, so you can do it with your hands. Don't got a stern wheel, nothing like that. So anyway, daddy was out there. Daddy was out there and he was, um, tilling the spot for his, um, okra. Was it okra? Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. I'm sorry. It wasn't okra. It was actually salad, salad, you know, like creasy salad, mustard salad and stuff like that. Um, so daddy was tilling the spot and what ended up happening, I don't know what happened to daddy's legs. They got weak or something, but daddy fell. And I remember running out there. I wanted to try to help him, but I didn't know what to do because I was such a little girl. But I watched my daddy get up. He didn't look back to see if anything messed up. Daddy kept going for it. And that's what you got to do. Even though you may fall short of some things, you got to stop holding yourself You got to stop holding yourself down, discouraging your own self by keeping looking back. Every time you turn around, looking back, examining your failures. You don't got to examine your failures. You should appreciate them and go for it. That should be a reason not to look back. So the Bible says in Luke 9, 62, and Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You cannot be looking back, period. And if you feel like you're going to have an urge to look back, if you try to lay down and, and, and waddle, it's a mess that God has already delivered you out of or some stuff that God has already said, look, don't worry about it. I got you. And you keep just bringing it up over and over. You keep feeding yourself negativity. Mm-mm, you can't be doing that. So go to Gal- Galatians 6 and 9. And this is why I'm telling you, even if you fall short, don't look back and start trying to pick up old mentalities, mentalities. If your upgrade feels like it's a little too heavy, good. That's what you want it to do. You want it to feel the, you want to feel the push and the burn. You can't get muscles if you ain't exercising. That's a sign that God is stretching you for your season. And speaking of seasons, um, Galatians 6. 9 through 11. I'm going to read 9 through 11. Let us not become weary in in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So in another words, if you happen to fall down along your way, Just get up and don't worry about it and continue to do good to others. Continue to do good. Don't compromise your gifting from God and your position from God just because you fail. Don't compromise it. We all fall short at some point in time. We will fall short. It's part of the lesson, but it doesn't mean that we have to go backwards. 
There's a season and there's a time for everything. And if that's your time to fall, you know, let me tell you, God is in control of all the seasons. God is in control of our time. But listen what God does with time for us. God gives us the accountability on the time that we have. You hear me? He gives us free will accountability where we are held accountable for our own selves and what we do with our time in the season that we are giving. We are held accountable by our own selves in the season that we are giving and what we do with our time Verse vice versa. So it's not that we don't have the time. Or the season, just because you fall does not mean that you go back. It means you keep going forth. You keep going forth no matter what. Okay? So write that down. Don't compromise your gift and your season and the time that you have been given just because you fall. You're probably going to fall right smart. Especially if you're trying to get new businesses off the ground. And that's how you learn how to work your business is through seeing what works, what doesn't work. What do you think marketers do? Marketers get out here. We see, you know, what we do. We get out here and we examine what's out here, what works, what don't work, what fail, what, what's good to go, you know, what's high, what's low. You know, sometimes you fall and then you examine yourself to see why you fail and move forward. But don't be trying to go back on no past failures. Okay, so the next thing I want you to um, write down, I ain't got long, I ain't got long, is keep your circle small and positive. Get with good people. Get with good people. They don't necessarily have to be on your same level, but get with good, encouraging people. Good, encouraging people who, even if they don't have a lot, they will still tell you, you know, let me tell you, when I was drinking a lot, I was hanging around people who didn't have more than I had. But you know what those people would tell me? They would still tell me, girl, you, you don't need to be doing that. You need to um put yourself in school. You need to put your money towards something better. You're too nice looking of a girl to be just out here hanging any kind of way. They were still pushing me. So that don't mean just because we ain't on the same financial level or we ain't got the same educational level that I can't take time to hear what folks are saying. So in another words, get with some people who are in your corner, who are positive, who don't mind pushing you no matter what. You know, Miles Monroe, if you go and look up Miles Monroe, the late Miles Monroe, he said you can determine where you are by who you keep running into. That's deep right there. That's deep. So who do you keep running into? Who do you keep running into? Is it the level that you want to be at? Is that the level that you really want to be at? You know, I was sitting back and y'all know I'm a lady of examples because I've been through a lot in my life and I don't mind sharing it because we overcome by testimonies. Amen. Uh, I was sitting around at a church one day and I love people. I really do. I love people. But when I saw the mentality that everybody had the same mentality, everybody was sad. Nobody had no life in them. I was like, what's going on here? And everything they talked about seemed like it was just dry bones. Seems like it just didn't have any life to it at all. And I couldn't stand that. So I gets up and I burst out happy. (laughs) I burst out happy. But I could tell those folks had not had a good laugh in a minute. So I could tell who they were hanging with by how they were acting. By how they were responding. So as the late Miles Monroe said, you can determine where you are by who you keep running into. I could tell that all of them was on the same level. (laughs) And I was determined that that was not a level that I was going to live in for nothing. Because they looked miserable to be church folks on the real. They looked really miserable. Okay, so y'all... Um, let me see what else. Oh my God, we're getting down. I only got eight more minutes. Dog, I did not even get to finish this. So you know what, y'all? I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. And you know, hopefully tomorrow I might get a chance to come back on and finish it. 
But so far, what you have as far as upgrading into your new life, it starts in the mind. Write this down, please. Your upgrade starts in the mind. You got to think on another level, a different level, a higher level with a higher standard. Our vocabulary words was upgrade and stagnation. In order to upgrade, there must be a movement, a standard going higher. And stagnation is whenever you're not even moving. You don't have no activity. There's no growth. Stagnation. I can't stand stagnation. There's no growth. All right. So, and the next thing um, I want you to write down is never allow people's Never allow other people's opinions and limitations to become yours. What else do we have here? Okay, divorce from group thinking. Realizing that you can't be happy. You know, you can't be happy being satisfied with others. With what others are happy with. And in other words, what you eat ain't going to make me. <laughs> Church folks. <laughs> what you eat, and in other words, what you eat ain't going to come down through my intestines, okay? That's what it means. And in other words, you know, if we don't eat of the same food, you know, am I supposed to be happy because of what you eat all the time? No, there may be some times I disagree. And, you know, a person who can disagree, that's a good thing. Disagreement is not always bad. It can It can bring on growth. Now, I'm not saying to stay stuck on negativity. Now, disagreeing is not negative all the time. It's only negative depending on, you know, what it's used in. So, that was part of it. You know, let me see what the next one was. Don't compromise your gift, your season, and your time. Don't compromise your, your gift, your season, and your time. And patience is a common virtue for all kings and queens. And don't be discouraged if you happen to fall down. Okay. So hopefully I get to pick this back up tomorrow. I'm sorry I didn't have enough time. I thank you all that are tuning in, listening to the Kiva Advancement iHeartRadio podcast. Did y'all hear my pen just plotting, just going in and out? But I do want to say this. Listen. God has a lot of good stuff out here. And there's a lot of good people out here. It's a lot of mean people. You know, it's, it's, it's not even on any hand. So you have to get to a point, no matter how low you are in life, that you have to make up in your mind. Look, I see this stuff in the word. Now I got to apply it. You have to make up in your mind that today is the day that you will get up and change your situation. It ain't that God ain't working. God is working. The fact that you have breath in you means that God is working. So it ain't that God ain't working on your behalf. The thing is, you're not applying something. So you got to go in there and pray for God to give you the missing pieces. What are you missing that's holding you back from going forward? What What's inside of you? What's the underlying cause inside of you that's holding you back from going forth? You know, I was praying the other day. And I started crying. I was like, I want to get up out of this situation, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is that keeps holding me back, that keeps putting, you know, every now and then I was feeling this little shame and guilt that was coming over me. And I would feel a certain way when I would go to certain programs. And then as I began to pray about it, Lord, what is this missing piece piece that is causing me not to feel right? And come to find out it was a little lie I told (laughs) before let me see before I really got saved in 2014 it was a little lie that I had told about who I was and and stuff you know how it is when you're just meeting a guy and you want to you want to um test the waters to see where he's at and you start pretending like you're somebody else so that little lie right there was eating on me and I said oh my god I never told him it was me I gotta go back and make this right and that's what I did and you know what I went back and I made it right. I said, hey, look, that you know, you remember that time when such and such a thing happened? <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm telling y'all, it was really hard. I'm laughing now because when I told the guy this, he didn't know it was me. And it really, I think it really hurt him. And it hurt me too. And, you know, I don't know how our friendship going to be because it was really deep. You know how women can be. And this all happened before 
I got saved. This all happened before I really came into the knowledge of who God was and what he could do.